this is Lauren from LSP Actions and welcome to video tutorial number three for the LSP Fur Babies Photoshop Action Set for editing dogs and other pets. In this video I'm going to be moving a little bit faster, this is more of an editing recipe guide. If you want a more slower paced video that goes over every um, element of installing the actions, how to set your brush up and what each section does, please watch video one for installation and video two for an overview and a slow edit going through everything and how to use each set. For this video I'm going to move a little bit faster, I'm going to be editing this gorgeous shot here, this beautiful little bulldog um, by Amanda Voller and the same dog in the shot too. In this one I'm going to show you how to remove the, uh, the leash and um, certain distractive areas using the select and fix. And in this one I'm going to be doing a similar kind of thing, but I'm also going to be really editing this for a fine art feel. So let's get started. First of all I'm going to play the magic image balance space here. So I'm just going to click that, it will play out. Make sure you can see your layers panel, if you can't you can go up the top to windows and choose layers. You can see this has balanced it really well. Let's slide the opacity up or down. Let's go for it about here. And I'm also going to warm the scene up a little bit too. And I think I'm going to play the Save Lost Blacks action because there is a, a lot of darks in the dog here. So you can see if this comes up full strength, I'm really bringing all those blacks back in. But I want to keep the image quite dark, so I'm just going to go up to about here and snapshot and flatten. You cannot use snapshot and flatten the elements, by the way, this is just for full Photoshop versions. Now I'm onto the brushes. My brush is set to normal, 100% opacity and 25% flow. So I'm going to use brighten areas first to brighten up this face. See, so I'm just clicking that over a little bit because obviously, just as with um, human subjects, the face really is the most important part of the image. I'm also going to use Black Areas Rescue Brush just to lift some of these darks even more. Just so we can really start seeing the details of the little dog like that. On the tone brushes I'm going to use Rover Red Riddance just to get some of this red toning out. Here and here. And I also may use Enhanced Greens just for some of the ivy here too. This is just going to bring some of those greens out. So we can see there before and after using those brushes to enhance the face. Let's zoom in a little bit here and work on the face a little bit more. I'm going to use the Nose Kiss brush. This just really brings attention to that little nose. That little snoot there, so it's just Loop that out a little bit. Bright eyes. Make the brush nice and small. You can use the square bracket keys on your keyboard to make the brushes larger or smaller. You can see I'm just running that over those eyes there. I'm going to use the clean up brush just to help um, soften and remove some of these kind of areas, little bits and bobs. But for the larger um, areas that I want to get out, I'm going to use the Select and Fix action. I'll show you how to do that in a minute. So I'm just painting away some of the little flakes, some of the little, um, you know, kind of gooey bits around the nose there. So we can see there before and after. I'm going to use Sharp Eyes Brush too, just to really bring the attention into the eyes. I'm going to cheat and use a little bit of that on that nose too. So now I'm going to go into Select and Fix. Before you use Select and Fix, let me just snapshot and flatten that one down, recommend using the Setup layer. What this does, it creates a brand new layer to work on. If you just hit Select and Fix on its own, it's going to come up with an error message. So first you need to select the patch tool. And you can either fix one area at a time, or you can hold down Shift to make a few selections. I'd recommend working on smaller selections um, at a time and not huge areas unless it's a very large or complicated area, in which case um, it's absolutely fine to work on. But you'll find your stride with this action. So I'm going over and I'm just drawing little selections around anywhere I just need to remove on this image. It's personal preference really. I'm going to get rid of some of the dead leaves. So I'm just drawing around these. 
holding down shift to make sure that I'm making more than one selection at a time. Any of these areas that I just feel like are distracting or need meeting up a little bit in the image. And what the action will do, it will play out and actually um, get rid of these and replace them with something um, that it feels is a little more suitable. So you can play select and fix, just click on it like this. It will work and fix all of those areas. You see there before and after that has removed all of the distractions. I'm also going to use this to get rid of this large bokeh area here because I feel that's taking the attention away from the dog a little bit. You could always patch something like this or use select and fix um, just by clicking on it again like that. So now onto the um, artistic enhancement section. I'm going to play as enhance and attention grab brush. What this will do is darken the image down and it's chosen a brush that I can use to paint the effect off of the subject, but it's also kept the enhancement there. So this is a really nice way, especially for outdoor or fine art images, to start bringing that attention into your subject, because sometimes if you've got a bright or busy background, you really want to, um, you know, take the attention back to your subject. So we can see there before and after, that's really helped to bring the attention in. I'm going to place Paley Silk Fur, so let's just play out. And again, if at any point I'm going too fast or you're not sure what I'm doing, you can go back and watch video one for the installation guides or video two for an in-depth walkthrough about how to use these actions. So I'm just painting this on and you can see that's giving a lovely, lovely finish to the fur there. I'm also going to play Purify Purples because um, I can see there's some slight purple toning in the ears. The white balance is slightly into the purples for this image. Of course you can fix your white balance first, but it all depends on the kind of image you want to go for. So I'm just going to paint some of those purple tonings away using that action there. There we have before and after using Select and Fix and the, um, the Artistic Enhancements and the Purify. So I'm going to use Snapshot and Flatten. You might add a Hazy Halo, so you can click and use the Hazy Halo brush here. Hit V or click up here for your move tool and drag this wherever you'd like it to go. You can hold down Control or Command T to resize this one too. Ooh. Not that much. And hit Enter. Let's just move that. Let's make it a little bit creamier and hazier behind the poochie here. Now grab a brush or hit B on your keyboard, onto black, onto the mask, make sure you do this on the layer mask. The layer mask is like a lottery scratch card, so you can decide what you want to show and what you want to hide. And we can turn that on or off, you see that lovely hazy halo there. You can also play with the opacity, um, depending on your image, get that creamy background look. You also have the beautiful blur brush as well, let me play this one out. So what this is going to do is going to add an intelligent blur to your background. You see this is a smart object here, and here is the blur. So once you've painted it on, on the layer mask with a white brush, you can also um, adapt the blur and change it to suit your image if you want to. This is how you can recreate a kind of a shallower depth of field here. So just take your time to kind of paint that on. And if at any point you play an action out and you think, mm, this doesn't really go with my image, you can just delete it. If you want to change the blur, you double click here on Blur Gallery and it will open up this window. You can change the amount of blur and you'll see the blur is kind of um, tweaking that to your image and hit OK. A little bit more intelligent than the standard kind of Gaussian blur there. It's up to you if you want to keep that or not. If not, you can just drag down. What I'm going to do is take a snapshot of that one and then remove it. So we have those two different options there. With snapshots, it's great. You can come up to your history panel at the top here and you can click on any of these to go to any stage of your workflow that you've kind of um, set as a snapshot. It's really cool. So now we're on to the, um, the diffuse finishes, although I may pay the, the invigorant vibe. Invigorate Vibrant Tones brush here, just to add some toning to that background so you can just really, really brings out a spectrum of colours there. 
Let's just add a little bit more tone in there behind Poochie. You see that? Absolutely beautiful. And you can change the opacity here if you want to. It literally is a case of clicking, painting, and deciding uh, whether you like the effect or not. So onto the diffuse finishes now. Um, you can either play the mix of all of them, warm mix, cool mix, dreamy mix, or drama mix, or you can just pick and choose a few of them to play. So I'm just going to go and play all of warm mix out for now, because I would quite like a warm um, finish, but I might also go for some drama too. So I think um, when warm mix is played out, I'm also going to play drama. And you can literally go through, and this is where you kind of choose your signature style, your own personalised finish. So let's play that drama mix as well, I think. And when these finish, you will be able to literally turn them on or off, slide the opacity to suit, um, and mix and match to suit your image. There are literally thousands of possibilities when it comes to using these. So if we put them all on, that's going to be a little bit crazy looking. So we can go through these one by one. Club, mm, I like that one. Drama Llama, you see, they just it just gives an entirely different feel to your image. Oh, evening, I think I'm really liking that one. And fairground. So Sean Moody Beast Beam looks really nice. So let's go for just select some of these and drag them away just to make it easy, but you can leave them there, it really doesn't matter. Um, let's get rid of club. Drama llama is just a completely different look, but uh, maybe not for this image. Evening I like, but I feel it's a, perhaps a touch too dark, so I'm just going to take the opacity of that one down. And you see a black brush is selected already, so you can simply use the bracket keys to make the brush larger. And I'm just going to paint that off the dock. You can also reorder these as well for a different look. Fairground I think is really beautiful for this one too. Drag beam to the top there. Let's go for that one. So let's get rid of Drama and Moody Beast. And that is before and after the Diffuse Finishes. So the Diffuse Finishes is really when you start getting your own signature finish in here. I'm going to come up and I'm going to play the Ultra Dark Black Magic Action here in the Image Balance section and use the black brush just to off because I really want it to kind of um, feel like that little doggy is peeping out of this beautiful frame here. And we don't really need all that um, ivy, so we can take the attention down a little bit there. So let's snapshot and flatten and see where we are before and after. We'll run through this edit quickly. So that's where we began, and that's where we finished using Fur Babies. So that was Image Balance section. This is the Brush section. This was using the Select and Fix to kind of get rid of any of these distractions see there they disappear and also the um, artistic enhancement brushes this is using a blur decided against it so without the blur hazy halo see there before and after using that hazy halo invigorate the tones brush and the diffuse finishes were for um, beam fairground evening and a little bit of ultra dark painted away there and again with all of these you can slide the opacity and change it until you're really happy so that's using the fur babies for this beautiful edit here, um, image by Amanda Voller. Same doggy here. So let's go for a very, very similar um, edit. I already know what I did for the first one, so I can simply click these, um, play them out, and apply the same effects. You can also use File, Automate, and Batch um, to, you know, to play the actions over several images in the same session. So I'll just warm and scale up a little bit here. I'm going to add a little bit of punchy contrast to this one. Lighting is slightly different there. Save Lost Black, so I think we use that for the other one. So this is, I'm going really quite fast on this one, and because I know exactly what I need to do. And you'll find your stride too using these actions, and before you know it, you'll be editing just as fast. Um, the great thing about using these actions to edit with is you really can just um, let your creativity go. It's kind of like driving, you know, you're driving and you're thinking of something else. It's a little bit like that with editing with these actions. You really don't have to worry um, about every click, about everything you're doing, about double checking everything. I mean, that's just exhausting. Nose kiss there. Sharpen the eyes. And that snoot, sweet little snoot. 
bright eyes, just as you would with um, with your human subjects too. Click back on that one. You can click back and add even more um, with each. Actually, if you want to, just click on the layer mask. All the layers are labelled for you. Just rescuing some of the black fur here. Rover Red Riddance for these um, slightly thinner area here where you can see some of the skin showing through. And perhaps Purify Purples too, just to make that more of a natural tone there. Okay, so that's a really great base that we've started with, so I'm going to snapshot and flatten. And then, oh, <laughs> You know that little noise? That's uh, one of my little twins next door right now. I'm sorry if the sound is coming through. Okay, so now we're on to select and fix. I'm going to do set up the layer up here to patch tool. Or just hit J on your keyboard. And you can just hold down. You can either do one at a time and hit select and fix. You can select it and then hit F4 on your keyboard. Or you can hold down shift and just go over everything you want to remove. Now I'm going to show you how to remove this collar, um, collar and harness in just a minute. But first I'm just going to use Select and Fix to get rid of any areas that I feel are distracting from the image and don't need to be there. These nipples, they really don't need to be there so we can get rid of those. The same goes for other, you know, intimate areas and things like that. that I mean I know it's a dog, it's not human, but anything that distracts from the kind of the artistic image you're trying to portray, um, you can use Select and Fix to remove. So I'm just literally using this patch tool to draw around all of these little distractions here as long as there is enough in the image for Photoshop to recreate these areas with um, you should have no problems at all but if not you're on patch uh, you can do it you can you might need to do a little bit of cloning but really you should be fine so we play select and fix now and that's just going to fix all of those areas there or you can select individually and hit F4 like this. So I've got my, my finger on the keyboard and I'm just hitting F4 for any of these areas. I mean, that tail, you could technically use that and get rid of it. It depends whether you feel it adds to the image or not, whether you want to leave it in. Entirely up to you. So now let's do the same thing for this harness here. I'm going to work bit by bit because you can see it's touching the doggy's ear right now. So I'm, it, this will create a bit of a weird area, but I'm going to show you how to do that. So first of all, I've just selected and used Select and Fix there to get rid of it. Now I'm going to actually zoom in and come around this area. You can hold down Alt to deselect. Always leave a little bit of a margin around the area you want to use so it knows to pull in. Okay, not the worst thing in the world, but still not great. So again, I'm going to come around and play it again. You may need to do this a few times and you'll see it's shrinking smaller and smaller every time as Photoshop is figuring out what you want to do. Now that really isn't too bad at all, except we have a bit of a double ear going on here. And if it really isn't getting it, you can just hit S or switch over to your clone stamp. Hold down Alt to sample and just use the clone to finish that area there off. And then patch tool or J, just to scoot it out of the way. You'll find your stride with this. Okay, and now the same for the collar here. I'm gonna come around and make a selection. I'm gonna do this piece by piece. It's good not to rush these things because then you can see what each thing has done and you can decide if it looks good or if you need to go back in, for example, there and play it again. Sometimes you need a couple of goes, one after the other, just to kind of really tell Photoshop what you want to do, and so the actions can work their best. But really, this is not too bad at all, so I'm just gonna select it and play these little areas here. Okay, and there we go. So that is before and after using Select and Fix to clean this image up. And now I think with the other image we did enhance the tension grab brush, didn't we? So I'm just going to use that one just to bring attention on Poochie in. I'm going to use the darken brush too just to kind of darken this background even more. It's 
just bring some of those nice rich tones in there. You could use Select and Fix to get rid of some of this. Um... Oh, okay, see, I pressed Select and Fix. I meant to set up the layer first, and then you can. Well, let's just go around these bright areas here. And we can either patch these out of the way, which sometimes if it's something very different, you might want to just use Patch Tool a little bit, and then you could use Select and Fix to finish it off. Like this. Just to get some of that bokeh um, texture in there. But really it does depend on the, the background and the nature of the image you're editing. Either way, do, do spend time paying attention to it, you know, because you're creating these beautiful fine art images. You don't want to let something like this let it down. So before and after, so before that white was really taking the attention away, and now the attention is back on the dog. I'm going to use the Add Warmth brush actually as well, just a little bit, just to warm this fur up to a more of a, um, a rich um, brindle tone that we've got kind of going on here. Okay, and now down to the diffuse finishes. What did we use before? Uh, Ultra Dark Beam, Fairground and Evening. So let's go for evening. First evening is very dark, um, it does what it says on the tin, so probably going to turn the opacity down a little bit on this one. Yep. And I'm going to use this black brush here just to take this off um, some of these areas here. So evening, then it was fairground and beam, so fairground. Uh, let's go for beam. Again, you could use it. It depends. I mean, this dog is actually in a different placement, a different position, so it really does depend on how you want your final image to look as to what um, finishes you use. And then I went up here onto the ultra dark black magic section of the image balance and painted this off the dog. Just to add some of that darkness in. Let's take the opacity right down. Okay, and snapshot and flatten. Let's see where we were and where we've ended up. So before and after using fur babies there to create this image. And of course, you can give this image to 10 different photographers with fur babies and they'd create 10 different edits because there are so many different options here. So you can check out the other video tutorials after this one for different styles of editing and you can also check out the recipe guide that comes with the PDF in your download. I'm Lauren, thanks for watching.